I assume you clicked on this video because you want to start streaming and you don't have the equipment for streaming and you are either broke or a tightwad or a broke tightwad, just like me. So without any further rambling, I'm going to get into my equipment suggestions. And the first thing that I suggest, and I feel the most important thing, is the microphone. I feel like the microphone is hands down the most important part of any stream because if you think about what you're doing, you are delivering commentary. Whether you're playing a video game or commenting on what you're seeing on the screen that's not a game, you're making commentary and the product that you are delivering is essentially spoken word. Most people will tell you that the most important part of your video is good clean audio and that's why I suggest that the microphone that you should invest in is the Samson Q2U. It's the microphone that I'm using right now. The Samson Q2U is a very forgiving microphone. If you hear any imperfections in this audio, it's not due to the microphone. I assure you, it's because of my bad mic technique. I am personally bad about not watching my plosives and my sibilants, but this microphone is far more forgiving of that than any other microphone that I own. And you can look at my video back catalog. I've used a lot of different microphones, but I have come full circle right back to the Samson Q2U. If you look at my first video that I ever made for YouTube, this is the exact microphone that I was using. I've tested out lavalier microphones, I've tested out shotgun microphones, I've tested out condenser microphones, I've tried a lot of different microphones, and I always end up going back to the Samson Q2U. The Samson Q2U should run anywhere from around $50 to $70, depending on where you shop around for it. The reason that I suggest this mic is because it's a mic that will grow with you as you advance. It has both USB and XLR outputs, so you can start using Using it as a USB mic, plug it directly into your computer and not have to deal with anything extra. But if you do want to upgrade later on to a USB audio interface or a mixer of some sort, then you can switch over to the XLR port and get a more professional sounding quality out of this microphone. And I do think that this microphone sounds fantastic. For microphones that cost less, you're going to get a lot less than what you get in this package. And to get a microphone that is better than this, you're going to have to spend several hundred dollars. So I feel like this microphone is that financial sweet spot. Hi, this is me from a different point in time. As I was editing this video, it occurred to me that there was something that I did want to say about this microphone that I completely forgot to say. And as much as I've said great things about this mic, and as much as I believe that it is the perfect mic for me at this price point, and it's going to be the perfect mic for a lot of people, this is a dynamic microphone. And as you've noticed, I keep the microphone very close to my mouth. That's the best use case scenario for a dynamic microphone. If you're in a position where you're going to need to have the microphone further away from your face, you may want to look into a cardioid microphone. And I've done a couple of reviews of different cardioid USB microphones, and I'll put the links to those mics in the description below. However, I'm not aware of any cardioid microphones that are both USB and XLR with their outputs, so you're going to have to pick your poison with one or the other if you go that route. You may be asking what's the difference between a dynamic microphone and a cardioid microphone. Well, the reason that I like this dynamic microphone is because it does a great job at isolating the extra noise in the room. The trade-off is that I do have to have it this close to my mouth. The downside is once it starts getting further and further away from your mouth, you really start dropping off and it doesn't pick up your voice so well. A cardioid microphone you can have further away, but the trade-off with that is it's going to pick up a lot more uh, room background noise like fans, and I've got some birds chirping outside right now. The cardioid microphone would most likely pick that up and cars driving by, things like that. So the cardioid microphone, you would need a lot more like soundproofing in your room and sound treatment and stuff like that to really get the best sound out of it. Whereas this dynamic microphone, for me, for my personal use, for I think most people, this is going to be the most forgiving microphone that you can buy. And as important as your microphone is, your microphone placement is equally important. And that's why I recommend, it's not a requirement, you can just leave your microphone on your desk if you want, but I think you're asking for trouble if you do. I think you should get some kind of microphone boom arm. Not this one. This one is complete junk. This is a, I don't know what brand it is, 
but it's very flimsy. Um, I've got a Tonor TC20 boom arm here, and it's actually really nice because I like to recline back in my chair a bit when I'm working sometimes, and it's nice that I can pull the boom arm with the microphone up to my mouth, and I don't have to rearrange in my seating to get my work done. This Tonor TC20 boom arm at $30 is a really good value. I feel like it's one of the best built mic arms in that price range. If you get any better than that, you're going to get into spending around $100 or more for your boom arm. But I have some really good news. I picked up this like generic knockoff brand of the Tonor TC20. I um, am working on a video for this, and I'll have it out shortly. Um, but I'm going to compare this boom arm to the Tonor boom arm, and they are practically identical. They're just rebranded, and this one costs $16. I can't remember the brand name off the top of my head, but I'm going to put that in the video right here so you can see what that is. As you can see, the box itself is completely unbranded, but inside, it is pretty much exactly the same as the Tonor boom arm at half the price. As far as my recommendation for a budget camera goes, if you've watched any of my other webcam review videos, you've probably heard me recommend this camera multiple times. This is the Nexago N660P, and you can pick it up for around $50 to $60. And I think under most circumstances, based on the price that you would pay for this webcam, that is around $50 to $60, the picture quality of this camera looks pretty good. Now, is it DSLR quality? No, but you're really not going to get that with any webcam on the market. And I think the marginal increase of quality that you would get from something like a Logitech Brio or the big fancy Aver Media 513, I think it is, camera, that you can get for $200 or more, um, I really don't see the justification in paying any more than $60 for this webcam. I think that the um, return that you get on your image quality is really not justified for the money. And if you're going to spend that kind of money on a camera, I think that that is a good path to just continue to save and get a DSLR or mirrorless camera, which is going to blow any webcam on the market out of the water. And even though the picture quality of this webcam may not be quite as good as a DSLR or mirrorless camera, when you shrink it down and put it as an overlay on top of gameplay video or some kind of commentary video that you're making commentary on, suddenly the quality difference really starts to close. And another thing that I love about this camera is that it is really good at processing light and color. So it's a very easy camera to work with for things like this, where you're green screening out the background. And uh, it makes it really easy to get a good, clean key, as far as webcams go, for doing this kind of stuff. And it just has a lot of great built-in settings that will allow you to fake it until you can make it. And speaking of faking it until you're making it, maybe you're in a situation like me, and you've got a bunch of junk piled up up in the background here like I've got all these boxes of equipment stacked and you may not necessarily want that in the scene and maybe it's just not in your budget for a green screen right now and maybe you have a personal preference that you just don't like green screens personally I don't like the green screen look and of course you can always just crop out a crappy looking background but I think a more interesting look rather than a crop I think a nice clean circular image mask like this looks a lot better than a crop any day of the week. Especially if you want to add something like an animation around it. And when it all comes together, I think it looks pretty good. And best of all, it doesn't cost anything. And you can do this with a cheaper webcam too. It doesn't matter what kind of camera image you put in this. My point is, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a camera for your stream. So it's my opinion, and this is just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. But it is my opinion that the camera is probably the least important piece of equipment in your entire stream. The camera is a very expensive piece of equipment and it can eat away at your budget very quickly if you spend a lot of money on a really expensive camera. And that's money that you could really be putting into other areas that would go a lot further for other things. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't aim for a really nice camera in the long run and if you become very successful at streaming you can always upgrade. But my friend Andy over at Andy Triple HDX does a lot of webcam reviews and you can check out his channel and get the scoop on a lot of lower end webcams and you do definitely have a lot of other options so don't take what I say as gospel on your camera especially seeing as 
I don't even necessarily think that the camera is the most important part of your stream. Shut up. Shut your ugly old time ancient ass up. So in my opinion, far more important than your camera is your lighting. And if you've shopped around for lighting for photography or videography online, you've probably seen this light. And this is the newer CN160. And there are a lot of like knockoffs of this light. And it's got a bunch of LEDs and a couple of different color panels that you can slide in and they're junk. The lighting is way too harsh. You can use bounce boards to tone it down a little bit and you can diffuse the light with like baking paper. But really, if you're going to go that route, you can do the same thing with one of these. And this is just a $4 work lamp from Lowe's. And you can pick up one of these white foam boards from Dollar Tree for a dollar and use that as a bounce board and get a lot better lighting out of, or at least the same kind of lighting out of one of these work lamps as you can one of those newer uh, photography lights. They're just not very good. Um, you do have a knob where you can turn the brightness up and down, but that's really about all the control that you've got. The light that I actually recommend that you use is these uh, Rolino lights. They're what I'm using right now, so I can't show them, but I'll throw a picture up on the screen. I did a full review of these Rolino lights, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But with these Rolino lights, you have a full range of color control, and you've got brightness up and down. You've got control over that, and they've got built-in batteries, and they're just awesome lights for the money. And if you're looking for something to just light your face and you don't have a lot of space to work with, these ring lights are actually not bad either. They this one has a range of color. This one has a range of color temperature and brightness up and down, so we do have some options there and this is really not a bad buy at like 20 bucks. Next up, I'm going to talk about capture cards. And the thing is, you may not actually need a capture card, depending on what kind of streaming you're going to do. I'm using a capture card right now to run my camera into my computer. Generally, for streaming, most people are just going to be using a webcam, and they're not going to be running their camera into a capture card. But I do recommend that if you do have a DSLR camera, just drop the 20 bucks, pick up a capture card, and use your DSLR if it's got clean HDMI output instead of, of a webcam. It's going to look a lot better, and that part of your stream is done. But what most people are going to use a capture card for is for a video game stream of capturing footage from like a Xbox or a Nintendo Switch or something like that. And if you're on the extreme budget range, this is the capture card that I recommend for that. This is the XWID HD capture card. Um, I just got this thing. I'm working on a review video for this now, and I'll have that out shortly, but it's USB 3.0. It has HDMI in and out, so it's got pass-through, and it's got an audio port in for a mic, and it's got a headphone jack. So I'm going to do a full review video on this. Um, that video will be coming out shortly. Uh, the downside to this is that it it will capture 4K, but it downscales it to 1080p, and it will only uh, stream that 1080p video at 30 frames per second. So if you're in a situation where you absolutely need that 60 FPS 1080p capture, this is actually the capture card that I recommend. And I did do a full review on this capture card, and it's up on my channel now. I'll put a link to this review in the description below, but this is the UCEC GamLive Pro, and um, this has all of the features of the other card, but it can do 1080p 60, and it can take a 4K input. It's USB 3.0, and um, overall it looks really great. I wouldn't recommend using this one for a camera capture, because it does darken the video just a little bit. Um, what I noticed on game footage, it didn't really matter that much, but when you look at this capture card, using it as a camera capture card, it does darken the video quite a bit. So that's just something to keep in mind. This XWID card will run you around $32 to $35, and for all that you get out of that, that's a steal. This UCEC card is a $100 capture card, and the thing is, getting any capture card to do true 60p is going to be expensive and there's just no way around that and from what i've seen the way this thing is built and with what it can do this is probably about the best deal 
on a 60 FPS capture card on the market right now. If you do just need a simple capture card for capturing your camera's output and using your camera as a source into your PC, the capture card that I actually recommend for that, it doesn't have pass-through, but you don't need it for that, is the P-Way capture card. And I did a full review of the P-Way capture card. I'm going to put a link to that capture card in the description. It only runs around $20, and for what you get out of it, it is a fantastic capture card. I've used it for like a year and a half now, and I've just gotten amazing results from using that capture card. Um, using a capture card with your camera will degrade the image quality just a little bit, unless you get like a really high-end expensive Elgato capture card, I guess. I've never used an Elgato capture card, so maybe the image de degrades with those as well. But those capture cards are going to cost you a pretty penny. And to wrap up, I would recommend having a little bit in your budget for just little knickknacks that you would use to mount your gear and tie up cables and things like that. Um, I don't use a full-size tripod for my camera because it takes up a lot of room. It's got a very big footprint. So I use one of these L brackets and I've got this mounted to the wall and I've got this ball head setting on there and then I've got my camera setting on the ball head and it just saves a ton of space. And you don't necessarily have to run out and get a camera L bracket. These things are not very expensive. But even cheaper than that is these L brackets that you can get at Lowe's. These are just corner brackets that you can get for like building projects and things like that. So uh, make a trip through Lowe's, make a trip through Dollar Tree and look for all of the little things and little knickknacks that you can use to just kind of help make your stream go a little smoother and anything that will save you time generally is well worth the money. It's also not bad to have a couple of these little tripods on hand. You never know when you might need something like this to do something impromptu and I, I've got three or four of these and they're just really handy to have. But that's it. That's what I've got for now. If I'm way off base be sure to correct me in the comments section below. Make any suggestions that you have and if you like this video leave a like. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.